right. Good morning, church. Man, good to see you guys. That was a strong good morning. Nick uh, woke you guys up, sounds like. So, man, good to be here. I'm Pastor Jake, uh, one of the pastors here uh, this morning. We are continuing our uh, sermon series called Run the Race. Uh, wore the shoes for it today. Um, but this morning, two of our other pastors uh, are actually in Boston this morning, getting ready for tomorrow's Boston Marathon, uh, which is really cool. So Pastor Josh and Andrew, uh, this is from a few years ago. This was uh, Josh's first marathon. But um, if you want to track them, not in like a creepy way, but if you want to track uh, their race, uh, you can actually put those bib numbers into that racing app and you can follow along. But uh, they're over there this morning and tomorrow they run that. And you might be thinking, you know, okay, he's got the shoes. Is Jake a runner? You know, why isn't he in Boston? And now you know my skill level. So... <laughs> Uh, I am an amateur, as uh, Josh was talking about last week. Do it for the love, not what you would call a winner. Um, just out there having a good time. Um, Josh, Andrew, and I, we've actually been running together ever since we first met, 2009. 15 years ago, we've been running together uh, this whole time. In fact, last spring, they helped me run my first marathon, helped me train for it. And uh, that was, um, yeah quite a time. <laughs> they helped push me uh, in that training just far beyond where I ever could have gone on my own. And uh, in the first 16 miles of that race, uh, it went exceedingly well, very well, um, thankfully. And I even PR'd in my half marathon and uh, was feeling really good. And then mile 17, oh, mile 17, it came. And uh, I had cramps from my hips to the tips of my toes. And I was like, like a zombie, like dragging my legs. And I, I didn't know what was happening. I was like, why did all of a sudden I go from fast to now my body won't move? And not a clue. I'm just running these miles. I'm thinking, I have 10 miles to go. <laughs> this is bad. And uh, this, this older gentleman passes me. And I'm like, dude, What's, what's going on? Because I literally, I had no idea. And he's like, you got this. And I'm like, <laughs> that does not answer my question. Uh, I, got, I got to an aid station, just high school dudes, of no, no help, of the, <laughs> no help. Did not even stick their hand out to offer me some Gatorade. Uh, so... I had no idea what was going on. Uh, apparently, it's called hitting the wall, hitting the wall. I had a six-mile wall <laughs> from 17 to almost mile 23, uh, truly thinking during that time, I should just stop. I should quit. There's the red bridge. I'm going to go jump off of it. Like, this, let's just be done with this. Um, and mile 23, like, all of a sudden... The wall started to subside a little bit, and uh, I could feel my legs again, which was cool. And um, so I'm, you know, kind of more like hobbling along at this point. And uh, around the corner, with about three to four miles to go, is when I see Josh and Andrew running up to me. They're not in the race. Uh, they are running. They actually ran from their house, Garden City, run up to me, and they run me into the finish. Now, I, without them, I do not know if I would have finished that race or finished as strongly as I would have hoped uh, without, you know, Josh yelling at me, go, go, come on, you got this. And uh, those guys, you know, cracking jokes, which was hard to laugh at in the midst of this marathon. Uh, but they really, that was just such an incredible encouragement to see their faces. I had no idea uh, that they were going to run with me and run me to the finish line. And so can I ask you this, who's, who's, who are you running with? Like, who are you running with today? Who's helping run you to that finish line? Who's encouraging you when you're hitting that wall, saying, only one more mile to go. Come on, let's do this. Push, push all the way to the end. Who are you running with? Who's encouraging you? And who are you doing that for? Who are you running the race with? Uh, maybe you're running the race of faith all by yourself, Maybe you're running it alone. You're isolated on the green belt at mile 22 just thinking, I'm going to quit. This is too hard. 
Uh, since 2020, actually many Christians have dropped out of being in a Christian community and they've been running the race alone. Pew Research shows us some stats on uh, church attendance in America among Christians since 2020. 9% of Christians attend church more than before the pandemic. Respect to you 9%. Uh, 42% stay the same, solid. 25%, a quarter of people, say they attend less often than before the pandemic. This is the one that is wild to me. 23% of Christians said they did not attend church before the pandemic, and they do not attend now. So almost a quarter of American Christians running the race alone, dropping out of Christian community, not meeting together weekly, not in Christian community, running that race alone. And maybe that's you here today. Uh, maybe you've been running the race of faith alone. Identi you identify as a Christian. You're a follower of Jesus, but you're doing it out there just by yourself. And the truth is we were not made to run alone. We were not made to run the race of faith alone. In fact, John Mark Comer in this book, we got a bunch of them over there in the resource area practicing the way. He puts it a little bit more bluntly when he says you can't follow Jesus alone. It's not shouldn't, can't. It's not even an option. Jesus didn't have a disciple. He had disciples, plural. He called people to apprentice under him in community. So we were made to run together in community. We were made to run together. And so today, I want to encourage you to find three people to run with. In fact, these are three types of people I want you to find in order to run the race well and to finish well, so if you're taking notes, there's going to be three coming up here. We're going to be jumping into Hebrews chapter 10. If you have your Bibles, uh, we are continuing in the book of Hebrews. We started in Hebrews chapter 12. And so we're going to continue in this book as we look at running the race of faith. And this is what the author of Hebrews uh, says to this Jewish audience. He says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together, together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So apparently there are these Jewish believers that he's writing to and they also have the same problem. They have the same problem. They're dropping out of church as well. They're not meeting together. People are doing this alone. It says it's even become a habit. It's become a habit for these people he's writing to. And so he's addressing this very important issue, saying get back to meeting together. Get back into Christian community. This is extremely important to your discipleship, to your faith. Now, one of the reasons that these Jewish believers, they stopped meeting together is because they're being persecuted. They're being persecuted left and right. On one side, they got these Jewish people who are kicking them out of the synagogue saying, you don't belong here, get out of here. You, on the other side, you got the, Gal you got, uh, the Gentiles um, who are just looking at this weird Christianity thing. Um, also, you know, you're not worshiping our gods, and so they're persecuting them as well. Everywhere they turn, they're getting persecution, and so they're dropping out. Why are we dropping out of faith? Because oh, there's a new brunch spot. Eh, there's a new Netflix special. Yeah, just turn on the TV. Like, what are we doing, right? These persecuted Christians, they're dropping out because they're, they're tired, they're weary, they're afraid of what's going to happen to them. And so they're dropping out of church, but they're, they're not only potentially dropping out of church. You see in the book of Hebrews, they're actually looking at, what if we drop out of the, the race altogether? That's what some of them are thinking. And so the author of Hebrews tells them, no, this is the very moment that you need Christian community in your life. Uh, when you are facing opposition, when you are facing hostility from the world, you're not going to make it alone. That's the reality. You're not going to make it by yourself. You need each other now more than ever. That's what he's saying to this group of people. And in the Christian life, the reality is you are going to experience some level of opposition to your faith. Uh, today, uh, there are more persecuted Christians around the world than ever before in Christian history. Now, we might not be experiencing that, especially to the level that our brothers and sisters around the world are, but that doesn't mean that you won't experience some type of opposition to your faith. Uh, in the Christian life, you will undoubtedly feel weary and tired. You will sometimes feel afraid, and you may even consider dropping out of the race altogether. 
Now, the antidote to that is not the American way. The American way of individualism, isolation, um, doing things by ourselves, pulling ourselves by our bootstraps. The antidote is actually leaning in, leaning into Christian community, finding other believers to run with. And so this is the first person I want you to write down, find other believers to run with. That's my encouragement to you. As you're out on mile 22, cramping from your hips to your toes, you got to be able to look to your left, look to your right, and see that there's other people running this race with you. Um, this is how we finish the race. Um, Josh, Andrew, and I, we've, we've not only been running together literally uh, for 15 years, we've also been running together spiritually for the last 15 years. This is a ridiculous picture. <laughs> Ridiculous. So we thought this was a joke picture, and they put that on the front of the BBC magazine that went out to <laughs> hundreds of people. Thank you, Dave DeVolt. <clears throat> um, but uh, we've been running together spiritually for the last 15 years, and in fact, 2011, we were up uh, in McCall at a spiritual retreat that our school was hosting. Uh, beautiful. Uh, it was November, December, somewhere around there. And uh, at night, we put our headlamps on, and we decided to go for a run that night. And uh, we turned it into a prayer run, and we were just praying out loud, praying and running together. And one of those prayers that we prayed is, God, would you use us to plant a church together someday? Would you use this to plant a church together someday? That's 2011. Fast forward to 2018, and that prayer comes to fruition as Hill City Church, uh, where the three of us have been pastors ever since. Uh, this is something that we've been doing together. And before we started Hill City, one of uh, Josh talked to one of our church planting mentors, and he said, is it a good idea to, you know, plant a church with my brother and, and with my friends? And uh, he replied, I'll learn from me and do not go it alone. Don't go it alone. Doing it together is absolutely the better choice. And he said the best years of ministry is when I was doing it with my friends. And so that, that's what he told us. And that's, that's the same goes for you in this Christian life. Don't go it alone. Don't go it alone. Do it together. That is the better way. That is the joyful way is when we run together. So find other believers to run with. And I say believers specifically because you're not just running with anybody, not just any friend, not just anybody, but you're running the, the, with people who are running the same race of faith as you, right? Other Christians who are running towards Jesus. That's who you need in your life. Now, the reality is some of you in the room, you've yet to even join the race. And you've been thinking about it, Maybe you're even intrigued here today. And if you want to join the race, if you want to join the team, if you want to become a follower of Jesus today, man, the invitation is extended to you. You can pray to receive Jesus into your life today. Not because of what you've done, but because of what he has done on the cross, his death, burial, resurrection being applied to you. You can join the team today and take that next step. The starting line is the baptistry, right? Come get baptized. Let's start following Jesus together today. Now here's some pretty exciting stuff. Not for the 915, but for the 11. <laughs> Sorry. We have two baptisms scheduled for the 11 o'clock. Can we celebrate that? Praise God. Uh, we have Cody and Mariah getting baptized at the 11. Um, but I just want to say, man, if you are here today and you've been wanting to do that, the water's warm. Usually it's cold, okay? It is actually warm for the first time. Thank you, Pastor Nick, for warming the waters. But it is warm today. We'd love to, if you've been on the fence, get baptized today. We got towels, we got shirts, I got my shorts in the car. Here's the thing, here's the thing. I have extended this invitation for the last two times that I've preached. In the last two times that I've preached, people have taken me up on it. And people have gotten baptized that very day. And so if that's you, let's do it. Okay, join the team, join the team. Now, maybe you're wondering, you're already a believer, you follow Jesus, but you've been running alone. What do you do? Join a life group. Man, I'm the life group's pastor, so yeah, I'm saying join a life group. But that is the best way to find other believers to run with. 
Uh, we have 78 life groups, 31 of which are open, available for you to sign up for. We have men's, women's, co-ed, young adult groups in Boise, Meridian, Eagle, uh, Nampa, groups of all kinds in all different places, right? There is a group for you. And if there's not, then that might mean you need to start one. <laughs> and you need to come talk to me. Uh, but this is the primary way at Hill City in which we run together. We actually, we have a men's group on Wednesday mornings that literally runs together before their 6.30 a.m. meeting. I'm like, pass, you know. <laughs> that, props to them. Uh, but they're literally running together and then spiritually running together. That's life groups are the place where we run the race of faith together with other believers. My life group has been invaluable to me over the last five to six years. It is the people that I do life with every single week, the people that I break bread with, I open the scriptures with, laugh with, cry with, pray with. These are the people that have brought me uh, and my wife meals when we've had our two kids. Uh, they're the people that have surrounded us in love and in prayer with my mother's battle with cancer. Uh, these are the people who know me best, who love me, who pray for me, who are running with me. And I could not have made it this far without that group of people. And so as the old African proverb says, if you want to go fast, yeah, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Go together. Like Josh said last week, is the race of faith a sprint? Nope. It's a marathon. It is far. And if we're going to go far, we got to do it together. Find other believers to run with. The second person that you need to find is not only another believer, but another believer who pushes you. Find people who push you in your faith. Um, Hebrews 10, 24, he starts by saying, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Uh, this Greek word for that phrase, stir up, is paroxysmos, which is a fun one. It means provoke, to prod, to motivate. Now it's used usually in a negative way throughout the New Testament. In fact, when you think about Paul and Barnabas and they have this sharp disagreement and go their separate ways a bit uh, concerning John Mark, um, that's right there. John Mark, that, uh, sorry, that sharp disagreement is a paroxysmos, right? Like it's, uh, it's usually a negative word, but here it's used in a positive sense, as po positive as it can be to prod other believers, right? To motivate, to stir them up, or as the uh, New Living Translation says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. So who in your life is pushing you to grow in your faith? Who in your life is pushing you to grow in your faith? Who's prodding you to love better? Who's motivating you to get up off the couch and to go do good? Because most of the time, we don't feel like getting off the couch, right? Like, we don't want to go work out. We don't want to go to the gym. We don't want to go for a run. But then when our friend who's like, hey, come on, we're going, right? Or Andrew, in the dead of winter, sub 30, he's like, get your running clothes on. We're hitting the hills. I'm like, I don't want to. He's like, we're doing it. Okay, you got to find those people who are pushing you, right? To get up off the couch, get out of our comfort zone, and go do something. Go do good. We need motivators in our lives. Because after we do, you know, after, okay, you do go to the gym, you do go for a walk, you do go for a run. You're like, that was good. I felt good. You feel good after that. It's the same thing. We need those friends who are like, hey, come on, let's go uh, serve a meal at Boise Rescue Mission tonight. Come on, let's go visit that widow in our church. Um, let's go have that friend over from Life Group who's been feeling a little lonely lately, lately. Like, what can we do to do good? You need those people in your life. And then when they push you, afterwards you're like, yeah, that was great. I needed to do that. Uh, we need other people to push us in our faith, to help us to grow, to become like Jesus, and to do the things that Jesus is calling us to do. Now, over the season of Lent, my life group, uh, we went through John Mark Comer's teaching on uh, fasting for those six weeks, and we fasted once a week for those six weeks of Lent leading up to Easter. And after that, at the end of those six weeks, I asked a very terrible question. This is an awful question. I said, uh, do, you, do any of you guys have any takeaways 
or next steps from this series? And they said, three of them immediately, yeah, we should just keep doing this every week. I'm like, oh, sh no, no. <laughs> That's not what I was uh, hoping you would say there. And uh, they're like, no, we should do what he said in the video. You know, you fast once a week, you take the money that you would have spent there, and you give it to somebody in need. I'm like, that is truly a loving good deed. <laughs> do I want to do it? No, I don't. But, and I'm the leader of the group, right? I'm the pastor. They want to do that. They're pushing me. They're pushing me to engage with fasting, to engage with the poor, uh, to get up, go do something, go do good deeds. Who's doing that for you? Who's doing that for you? Uh, maybe who are you doing that for as well? Um, I, I mentioned life groups. That's a, one of the best places to do this. But another avenue for finding a believer who will push you is a mentor. Finding a mentor uh, to disciple you. A mentor is like a coach, right? A mentor is a coach, someone with experience uh, to help push you along in the faith. I remember my running coach in high school, um, not only pushing me in practices, but out there on the course, like he would find me, like pop out of a bush and he'd just be like, okay, let's go. He's like, hey, keep your arms at your side. Like keep your head up, lock onto that guy, go. And uh, he would coach me as I'm literally in the race. Uh, we need those people in our lives, in our faith, in our Christian walk, in our Christian run. Uh, people who have already gone ahead of us, they know what this race is like. Uh, they can teach us and model for us how to pray, how to read the scriptures, uh, how to overcome sin, how to be a godly parent, be a godly spouse, how to follow Jesus in the workplace. These are people who have already gone ahead of us, who can show us the way, because learning to follow Jesus is often more caught than taught. It's often more as you're actually following someone. You're right on their shoulder, right? Not, not from stage, from their shoulder, right behind them, that you're following them and you're learning from them and you're growing. Uh, we need these models uh, of people who are following Jesus to pattern our lives after. Uh, Paul in Philippians 3.17 says, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model. Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Or in the message, Eugene Peterson uses some running language. He says, stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running this same course, headed for this same goal. So who are those people in your life? Who's running the race? Who's ahead of you? Find a mentor. Find a coach. Someone who you can model your life after. Who can do this for you. We uh, had my friend Dylan Roy speaking yesterday at the men's breakfast and saying, hey, anybody who wants to be a mentor, stand up. And uh, we had a lot, of, a lot of guys stand up. There's a lot of men and women in this church uh, that would love to be mentoring you. I'm coaching you along in the race of faith. And it's not something that we're going to uh, programmatize. It's something that is organic. It's something that you got to ask, right? To ask them out for coffee. You're like, hey, I'll, this person follows Jesus. They seem like they're doing it well. Um, ask them out for coffee. Ask them out for lunch. Ask them out for a run. Go on a run together. I don't know. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe it's not. Um, inversely, here's what I, what I want to ask you. Who are you mentoring? Who are you coaching? Who are you discipling? Are we all called to make disciples? Here's the reality. Even if you've been a Christian, you've been a Christian for 40 years, you've been a Christian for four months. Somebody is still at the starting line just getting off the blocks. Right? So even if you've been a Christian for four months, somebody, you're still ahead of somebody, aren't you? And you can show them the way. Those little meters that you've gone so far, Right? Every one of us is called to make disciples, to be helping each other, stirring up, spurring on, pushing one another in our faith. So find other believers to run with. Uh, find people who can push you. And then third, find people who can keep you going. Keep you going. He says encouraging one another, right? People who are keeping you going. Who's encouraging you in your faith? Uh, who's speaking those words of life to you as you follow Jesus? Who's on the sidelines and say, keep going, you got this, here we go, right? Who are those people? 
Because there's such a strong pull from the world, such a strong pull from culture to say, drop out, slow down, quit the race. Who cares about that whole following Jesus thing? You got enough pressure on the sidelines of people trying to pull you off the path. You need people who are going to say, keep going, keep going. That's what, the, that's what the author says, encourage one another, keep going. And you never know what one word of encouragement might do for somebody. One word of encouragement has such power within it to help somebody keep going. It can change their day. It can change their life. You never know. And encouragement, it has this reciprocal effect, doesn't it? The more you encourage other people, the more you feel encouraged. Right? It's that gift that keeps on giving. So let me ask you, who are you encouraging today? Who's on that mile 23 cramping up? They need to see, come around the corner, run with them, right? Who, who are you encouraging today? Uh, who's coming up, cramping, having a hard time? They need that little Dixie cup of encouragement, right? Slap on the back. You got this, right? Who needs your encouragement today? Um, that's what I want to ask you. God, for me, often brings people to my mind to encourage. Uh, in 2020, I sent an email to, there, there was this gal who was on our worship team. I was the worship leader at the time. And uh, she had moved that summer and to be closer to family. And uh, I, we hadn't seen her, you know, for a month or so, maybe a, maybe a few months. And I just sent her an email, said, hey, we miss you. Hope you're doing well over there. And uh, didn't hear back. It's like, that's fine, you know, ghosted. And uh, about a month later, uh, several weeks later, uh, she did message me back. She did email me back and she said, um, just want to let you know that the day that you emailed me was my dad's birthday. And a few weeks before this, uh, before that, my dad unexpectedly passed away. And we took that as a family. We took that as a sign that God is with us. So thank you for your email. I didn't know that, right? That's just God brought it to my mind. Boom, shot her a really quick email. And God used that as an encouragement to her and her family that day. What is one word of encouragement you could give to somebody else today? You have no idea how far that might go. Who can you lift up today? There's an incredible story of uh, these two brothers, world-class athletes. And in 2016, they are competing together in the World Triathlon Series. It's a race in Mexico. Uh, the one brother, uh, Johnny Brownlee, he has this major lead. He's set to win the race easily. Uh, but right at the very, very end, um, things go terribly wrong. And so this is, uh, this is a, just a short clip of kind of what happens uh, that day. Has done what he needed to do. <clears throat> And uh, Alistair Brownlee with nothing between them. It's going to be a, a dart for the line between those two. But either way, yeah. it's going to be Johnny Brownlee's world title. And right now, he's upwards of about 10 seconds over his brother. The crowd's starting to give him some love. And he's just got to make a, one little turn out of this section, this out and back section. And then they're coming. Schumann and Brownlee still almost side by side. Wow. He looks like he's suffering. Yeah, uh, he, that was a weird look just coming around there. And he's suffering. That is a very odd look for Johnny Brown. Look, look, his feet just says to me that he's in trouble. He, he oh, is in trouble. Look, look at, at him. this. This is unbelievable jo Johnny drama. Brownlee, I think he might have just fallen. He is in massive trouble. He is 400 meters from the finishing line, and he does not know where he's at. Johnny Brownlee may not make the finishing line. He's looking over his shoulder. He is desperately in trouble. I don't think I've ever seen this. Let's see if Alistair stops. Johnny Brownlee is no. not going to finish this race. Alistair's come, come, come. He's got him. This, I have never seen this before. Henry Schoolman is going to win this race because Alistair Brownlee has stopped for his brother. I don't even know if that is allowed. I, do you know this what? is incredible. I, I don't think he cares if it's allowed well, or that not. That is the most incredible thing I have ever seen in a triathlon. Alistair Brownlee is trying to get his brother across the line. But the two Brownleys are coming with less than 150 meters to go. They could get caught from behind because it is not that big of a gap. Taking the flag right now. He can't even hold himself up. Little and take the flag. Here comes Richard Murray around the corner. This is the most ridiculous grand final I have ever seen. In just a few seconds, this is absolutely insane. Here comes Richard Murray. The two Brownleys are trying desperately to get across the line. 
Oh my God, Johnny Bradley in second. It will be third across the line, Alistair Brownlee. That is the most insane last few meters. Isn't that incredible? That is probably the greatest picture of the Christian life you could ever see. Holding each other up, literally lifting his brother up to the finish line. Running him all the way to the ends. Picking him up when he's delirious, when he can't even run himself to the end. We pick each other up. We encourage each other all the way to the finish line. You notice at the end there, he pushes his brother into second place. <laughs> right? He doesn't even take it for himself. In humility, right? That's, this is the Christian life. This is what we do for each other in the race of faith as we run towards the finish. Now here's the reality. There is a finish line. You know that? There is a finish line. We're not running in vain. We're not running aimlessly. We lift each other up. We carry each other to a specific destination, running towards something, to a finish line. This is what he says at the very end of the passage. He says, let us consider how to stir each other up, to love good works, uh, encouraging each other. And here's the point. And all the more as you see the day drawing near, as you see that day. What's the day? The day is eternity. The finish line of heaven. The gold streets, green pastures of eternity with our Savior. That's the finish line. And there's no greater finish line to run towards. It's greater than ever, anything we could have ever imagined. All the joy, peace, love, wonder, amazement, excitement, awe that the mind could ever conceive of. And at the finish line, you got Jesus standing there with his arms open wide saying, welcome home. You made it. You finished. Here we are. And so as you run the race of faith, here's what I want you to do. Keep that finish line in mind. The whole time as you're running, keep the finish line of heaven ever before your eyes as you are running and running. Don't stop, don't quit, don't slow down. Fix your eyes on that point and run because every drop of sweat, every aching muscle, every tear is worth it. Uh, there's gonna be times where you might be f feeling afraid Man, we got each other. Life is short. That day is drawing near. We must run together. So let's do it with such vigor, such passion, that we too can say, like the Apostle Paul, you remember this when he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Keep going, keep pushing. Let's finish the race together. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your goodness, your presence, your love, peace, and joy. We thank you for your encouragement that you give us each and every day. And God, I pray that you would surround every person in this room in a Christian community with other believers to spur them on to encourage them in the race of faith. God, we pray for those, for those areas of our lives where we're feeling weak, we're feeling uh, weary. God, I pray that you would fill us up, strengthen us, um, that you would give us uh, just that motivation, that encouragement that we need to keep running and to keep running hard. God, we thank you that we're not doing this alone. And we were not made to be alone. You said that. And so we thank you for providing such beautiful community, the body of Christ himself, the church, the beloved. And we pray that uh, every person in here would get even more uh, deeply rooted in community, in Christian community. And so we, uh, we just thank you for this incredible life you've given us. We thank you for the finish line of heaven that we are racing towards. Uh, we thank you for what you have for us on the other side of eternity, God. We await that day with such great anticipation and hope. We pray this in Christ's name, amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing this last song. Peace, I 
like a river wash over me Immerse me in water as deep as the sea like a river wash over me as I worship your majesty I worship your holy name and Jesus my done it before would you do it again lord send revival lord send it now move your spirit heaven break out and come now in power come 
cover this land as you done it before would you do it again lord send revival lord send it now move with your spirit heaven break out come now with power to cover this land like you done it before Heaven break out, heaven break out, as I worship your majesty, I worship your holy name, Jesus my as your people that's when you move God so I pray we would step out of our comfort zones Lord that we would run the race set before us and that as we do you would just bless 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 Lord bless our church let us see you moving let us see your presence doing wonderful things God open our eyes to see more than we ever thought we could see before we love you it's in Jesus name we pray Hi, church. I'm Shara. Uh, I'm one of the kids directors here at Hill City. Um, and I just have a few announcements for us before you get to go and enjoy this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Um, first of all, there's a women's spiritual formation event happening April 27th from 9.30 to 2.30. I've been to one of these. It's an amazing and impactful time of just worship and prayer and connection and not just not just with one another but also of course with the lord um, the women's leadership team does ask that you would register for that because a light lunch is provided so you can do that by going on the website and then clicking on calendar i always get a little confused on the website but you go to calendar then you go to sign ups and it'll show all the events um, and then speaking of events, in about a month, we are gonna be having family dedications on May 12th. And family dedications are an opportunity for just our church body to surround parents and encourage them in their high calling of raising their children in following and knowing and loving Jesus. Um, let me think, what else do we have next? Oh, if you need prayer, um, at the end of service, we will have a prayer team that comes up here and they would just love to pray over you for anything, whether it's something you need or even just praising God, like this amazing thing happened to me this week and you just wanna share it with somebody. Um, they will thank God with you. Um, and not quite lastly, because I have a special surprise, but um, <laughs> there's also, um, if you came prepared to give today here at Hill City, we say that we give because God gave. And if we follow Jesus with everything, Jesus gave all of himself, and so we can give all of ourselves too. So if you came prepared to give financially today, you can do that um, with the ushers in the back, or you can go to hillcityboise.org slash giving, and you can donate on there. So, with that special surprise, I was literally just told like two minutes ago, we're gonna have a baptism. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of the way.
how about that? Jake was talking about it, and someone's like, I'm going to do it. That could be you. So anyways, um, church, would you just stand with me for the benediction? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Going forward in peace, church.